What's up remote pilots, Mike Seitz here, and in this video, I'm going to break down the most confusing question on the FAA Part 107 exam. This is regarding question number four on the 50 flashcards video, but before I get into that, let's reiterate question number three. Under 14 CFR Part 107, which operation is explicitly prohibited? Now if you notice, A has the remote pilot in command as driving the vehicle, but that should be listed as passenger. A remote pilot in command cannot not operate a vehicle while flying or operating a drone. A remote pilot can only be a passenger while operating a drone in a sparsely populated area. So only answer B will be explicitly prohibited. Now getting back to this most confusing question on the FAA Part 107 exam. I received the question in the form of a comment from Scooby Monkey and you should thank him for sending this question because I did a running poll and you will be shocked to see what the results were. His question basically was if you do the conversion of 0.55 pounds into grams it should equal 250 grams question mark now I'm keeping his question on the screen so you can read it but I want to show you how the FAA is actually the culprit behind this confusing question and it's supposed to be something that's extremely simple so here's the question again number four which of the following drones needs to be registered under FAA part 107 rules and regulations and you see that there are three answers choices here and some of you will say ah oh, I know this answer it's very simple but this is an FAA illusion the fact of the matter is that numbers don't lie and you can see just from one day of polling this question and the question is if a drone weighs 0.55 pounds does it need to be registered with the FAA how many of you can get this right and look at the numbers below in just a matter of one day there were 250 who answered the question and only 21 percent got it correct and even and worse, the majority at 52% got the answer wrong. Now, if this is not proof enough and you need me to open your eyes even wider, I'm going to take you to the FAA website so you can look to see exactly how they presented this information. And after, I'm going to give you the memorization tools that you need so you'll never forget it and you'll never be confused again in regard to this simple question. And I'm going to politely put it right in your face right now. You all should have got a 100% score on this question. And here's another one. It just came in today, one hour ago from Wyatt. It says, this is actually wrong, broski. It is 0.55 pounds plus. <laughs> he called me broski. Can you believe that? So I replied back saying, no, no, no. Don't confuse everyone else, broski. Click the FAA link and read the regulations carefully. In fact, read them five times with a magnifying glass and then reply back to this comment. But he's not going to reply back after he reads that FAA ruling. So here we are at the FAA website and you see it's how to register a drone. And if you look a little bit below, you'll see where it says all drones must be registered except for those that weigh 0.55 pounds. I'll repeat that for those of you who weren't listening. A drone must be registered except for those that weigh 0.55 pounds or less. Did you see that? Now, the confusing thing here is that the FAA put both 0.55 pounds and 250 grams in the same sentence. And that's where the FAA made their mistake. Not making their mistake in regard to being specific about the rules and regulations, but making their mistake in regard to confusing the general public for what weight actually should be considered. 0 0.55 pounds is an imperial unit, whereas 250 grams is a metric unit. It would have been better to relate only to one unit of measurement, but who knows, I'm not the FAA, right? So I don't call the shots. But the confusion has been systematically created because the FAA used both units of measurement and therefore it leads people to think and believe that 0.55 pounds equals 250 grams. Now the reason that the FAA put less than 250 grams in parentheses is because they want you to know that 0.55 pounds is less than 250 grams. Do you see how I gave you that breakdown of the interpretation so that way you'll understand this clearly? 0.55 pounds does not equal 250 grams. It equals exactly 249.48 grams. And for those of you who have been using ChatGPT, broski, to get the correct answer, well, guess what? ChatGPT is going to get the answer wrong also. I'm not making this up. This is not a David Copperfield magic trick. ChatGPT says that, yes, you must register a drone if it weighs 0.55 pounds or 250 grams. It thinks that both of those weights are equal and ChatGPT is wrong. I'm right. 
So if you're talking about a drone that weighs exactly 250 grams, well, guess what? That drone needs to be registered, and 250 grams does not equal 0.55 pounds. Why do you think DJI put 249 grams on their drones? So going back to the question, which of the following drones needs to be registered under FAA Part 107 rules and regulations? You all should know that answer 100%. It is not A because A is a 55-pound drone, and the FAA says that drones that are less than 55 pounds need to be registered. So let's go to B, a drone weighing 0.55 pounds and being flown recreationally. Well, I just showed you the FAA ruling verbatim. It says that a drone must be registered except, except, except for a drone that weighs 0.55 pounds or less. And if you go to answer C, it's very clear that the FAA says that a drone weighing 250 grams, whether you're flying it recreationally or whether you're flying it commercially does not matter. If it weighs 250 grams it must be registered. Now let's go back to the question that I posted and the main reason why I decided to make this video. It's a simple but confusing question. If a drone weighs 0.55 pounds, does it need to be registered with the FAA? Now what you all need to do is whenever you're taking the part 107 exam, you need to read the questions and the answers very, very carefully because these questions are trick questions. The FAA knows that you're not paying attention to this question. You're not paying attention to details and a large percentage of you will answer this question incorrectly. So therefore, let's make it a goal that we can score much higher than the FAA is anticipating on this exam. Don't jump to conclusions simply because you think you know the answer. But by saying that you do know the answers, you're simply not focusing enough. So I hope you got something out of this video and I hope it brings you a much higher score than what the FAA is anticipating. Post your comments and don't forget to use my new middle name. Until then, I'll see you all on the next one.